Well, we're here in the Rotunda at Village Hall, and we're looking at Portraits of American Veterans Project with Janine Hill Soldner, the artist who did so many beautiful, uh, these are works of art, they're portraits. And Janine, uh, how did you get started in this? I know as a young girl, you what, were always an artist. What inspired you but, to do something like this? Well, my inspiration came from the way I grew up. My dad was a veteran. He was a Marine, and he, he, by the time my parents were married, my father had already survived World War II in Korea. And he went on to serve in uh, two tours of duty in Vietnam. And he, in 1965, my family was living in Hawaii, and my father trained, um, he was in a B recon, period reconnaissance battalion, and he trained some of the first ground troops that went into Vietnam in the spring of 1965. 65, yeah. And so I grew up, I was um, in third grade at the time, and so I grew up uh, on and around military bases during the time of the Vietnam War, and I saw my father leaving and coming back, and I saw my mother going to a lot of funerals for the spouses and sons of, of uh, the Marines that had served. And so um, until my, I had, after I, uh, I grew up and I was married and went on and started my family here in Illinois, it really didn't think about it a lot until my father passed away in 1993 from prostate cancer. He was only 64 and that was from, at the time, was not uh, much talked about, was it was proven that it was caused by heavy doses of Agent Orange when he was in Da Nang, Chu Lai, and Phu Bai and out, out in country as, as re, in reconnaissance. Well, I was angry. I was very oh. angry oh, yeah. that he was taken at such a young age. And, and he survived three wars, four to, tours of duty to war. And um, I started, um, I, because I was already a professional artist and an art teacher, I started painting, um, pa doing paintings of my family during my dad's first tour of duty in Vietnam. And as I exhibit those, I had them in an exhibit for a year at the National Veterans Art Museum here in Chicago. And when I would go, in, I would come in, I live in Algonquin, so I would come into the city and I would give uh, tours of my work and talk about my experiences with high school students. And, um, the re and then a lot of people would come and see the work and I would hear the reactions both of veterans and their family members. And um, through that, I became involved with the, national, with the Vet Art Project at the National Veterans Art Museum, where I learned more about interviewing and writing about veterans, and I learned about um, how to listen, which we don't do enough in this culture anymore, how to sit and listen. You don't have to write it all down, you just have to lend an ear. And um, from that, I started with several of the veterans that were a part of the Vet Art Project. I started with them as a, as a subjects. And then a friend of mine, Frances Mayling, whose father was a World War II veteran, she helped me find some more veterans, which are more World War II veterans than I've painted. And so um, the first painting I did was in 2009. And I'm preparing to really wrap it up with the last painting, which will be the 24th portrait. Uh, which will be of my father. Well, I noticed, Janine, when you do do uh, your painting, you have some of the medals and some of the pictures of them when they were y that young. In the you, service. But you painted that, too. You didn't just use the photograph itself. You actually painted... It's like a double painting in one painting, isn't it? Frances? Yeah, I, I found that very interesting very that you interesting. would do that. Thank you. Well, what, the reason I did that is to tell their story in the visual format. Yes, and to show, because he's obviously older here, but you say about the eyes. When I look in his eyes, they look so real. It does not look like it's painted, and you see so much about the person. Thank you, and one way that I, I can do that is um, all but one of the veterans I personally met and spoke to, most of all but two of them came to my studio in Crystal Lake, the Lakeside Legacy Arts Park, when they come to my studio, we sit and talk. I have coffee and donuts or something, and, mm -hmm. and we just talk, and I know how to talk with people that are probably resistant to say anything because mm -hmm. I don't do all the talking. And the tissue are usually close by, and after about, you know, I give them time when we, they feel like they're ready to, to pose, then they sit for me for maybe an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how long they can sit. 
And um, I start from life from a with a blank canvas, and I try to capture, like in Pat Tanner, I try to capture the essence of the person in their face, and mainly the eyes. And then I take photographs, and I finish the painting from photographs. And then each veteran provides their, some photographs they have of their military experience. Sometimes the family has ha, provide them. They email them, or they bring them to me. Uh, many veterans no longer have their medals, so I ask them what medals they had received. And I have a book on military medals, and I do my research, and then I include all the medals they would have received. Right. Hmm. Jimmy, let's go over here. And another interesting. You know, even in looking at his eyes, Tanner's eyes, it looks like he's remembering, like he's looking back and not looking forward. And you catch that in the painting. Thank you. And maybe you brought forth a lot of memories that they kind of suppressed. And it was probably very good for them to get it out. I so think it is. Them, I know. think it is good to get it out, but yeah. not to get it out in a public forum. Right. No. So and he's it's, just telling you. And one thing it's is that coming into my painting studio in Crystal Lake, which I have 900 square foot studio, full of artwork, and it's in a historic building. So when you walk into the building, you're walking into another time. Mm -hmm. And as you come into my studio, it's a whole different world, and I have music in the background. Mm -hmm. well, and it takes you out of the present and can take you anywhere you want. Well, you, you had all the right touches. You had music in the background. You had a nice warm cup of coffee and donuts, which is very friendly. It relaxes a person, so yes. you can really catch the true character of the person. Here you have a, a brother, a picture of a brother with his brother, and a, a female that you don't hardly ever see. And when there's a lot of women that served, and you've got four or five p paintings of women that yeah, served that we didn't even know about. Given much uh, publicity as much as the men, which I know the men see more danger, but still they gave a lot of themselves as well. Yes, they do. They, they, the, this, the woman is my sister. I thought so. She's my youngest sister, and I she lives in Florida. And she came up to have her portrait painted, and unfortunately, her uh, military experience in the Philippines. She, uh, she is one being treated by the VA for um, something that, I guess if you pay attention to some of the news, you know things are going on in the military where w women are being hurt so badly they carry it with them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So this was a healing process for her, and it helped her mm -hmm. talk about things. I heard things from her I'd never heard before. Yes, I mean, they have to get it out because it's... It's gnawing at them inside, and it's yes. tearing them down. Yes, and when, I, when, and when I talked to my mother about that, she said Sharon came back so much better. Oh, see. How yeah. That, yeah. That catharsis that occurs. And this, this is actually um, a veteran who did not serve. He's a Vietnam War era veteran. This is Virgil Mathis. He's from Chicago, mm -hmm. and... Um, he actually joined um, the Army, and his mother didn't know that he did join the Army. Oh, wow. He snuck off and joined the Army. At the same time, his younger brother snuck off, and he joined the Navy. And um, so Virgil actually was already had a background in, tech, in um, radio technology and radio, a lot of knowledge about radio. So he was stationed in Europe during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And his younger brother was uh, in a CB in the Navy and do to, did two tours of duty in Vietnam. And when his brother came back from Vietnam, he was a paraplegic. Oh. And so Virgil never married. He spent his life basically taking, taking care, of, care his of his brother. brother. Loved his brother. Yes, and he was a veteran, that a Vietnam veteran, that when he came home, he lived in a car for a year. Oh, wow. Those stories have to be said and have to yes. be heard. They have and to be heard. We don't, we don't get enough of that. I know there's someone over here that's kind of, kind of everyone knows their, uh, who this person's name is, Mr. Cullerton. Oh, this is Bill Cullerton. Yes. These two portraits, are, these two people are very special people to me. I'll talk about Bill Cullerton first. Bill Cullerton is very famous Chicago um, WGN. Uh, radio personality. He used to do the WGN uh, radio show on fishing. But Bill Cullerton wa was also a World War II flying ace. And Bill Cullerton had more kills in um, 
over Italy and, and uh, over Germany than any other World War II flying ace. He was stationed out of Steeple Morden in, and this is a painting of the stained glass window in Steeple Morden. By the way, the stained glass window was designed by an artist in Woodstock. And the stained glass window is in the Steeple Morden Church in Steeple Morden, England, where he flew his planes out of. So he, Bill Cullerton, as you can see from his medals, yes. highly decorated, very, very nice man. And he came to see me in, I believe it was 2011, um, for his portrait. And Bill recently passed away. Mm. We've, got about a, we've got about a minute, minute and a okay. half. And I will talk about my father-in-law, who came to my portrait, to my studio, um, a year and a half ago. And my father-in-law was, was a Marine for 25 years, and he served two tours of duty in Vietnam um, in aviation ordnance. So he is one of the few in the proud, as my father was, and they knew each other in the Marine Corps. Oh, wow. Yes. That's kind of nice. Yes. So he, he was, um, he had never talked about his military experience, and he never found a lot of pride in his service until after he came up. And, you know, he was proud of his service, but after he came up for his portrait, then he started wearing his Vietnam veteran hat, and then he started becoming active in the VFW, and um, so it was good for him to talk about some of his experience. Well, you kind of had your tour of duty doing this for, um, former military men so they could tell their story to someone and they told it to you and you portrayed it in their portrait and you did a service as well because yeah, that good. was good for it's them wonderful. you really helped them it's wonderful work and if you get a chance come on out to the rotunda it's open as long as village hall is open so we'll be here how how many more days do you oh, remember I can come back and take it down on friday uh, so hurry up and get longer. here it's a, it's quite an experience just to Thank walk you. through here see all the uh, beautiful portraits you've thank done. Thank you so much for your Thank you well, for thank sharing you for, for with the us. opportunity to, to share the portraits and the stories, and um, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I appreciate this, the Village of Addison making the, the, um, both the library and the Village Hall available to share, share these wonderful veteran stories.